<laughs> so, Michael, um, season two ended with a heart attack uh, oh, yeah. scene. Uh, how sensitive was that to shoot that scene? Oh, I loved it. I really loved it. I had uh, sympathetic pains in my back. So as we were shooting the scene, uh, I was actually having my back seize. Um, and so some of the winces were actually my pain, whether or not it was real pain or phantom pain that I was acting, creating. Actors are weird. But I had uh, a great time shooting it because I love the layers of bull. Bull can be seen just as a, a, an episode of television where there's a crime and there's someone who's accused and we figure out the guy and then hopefully everyone, most of the time things end up well. And that can be satisfying in a nutshell. But the layers of character and what it's talking about in terms of society today and why, um, why certain people are shut out from being helped, whether it's um, health care or uh, some sort of bias that's racial or sexist or ageist or whatever it is. Um, I think the idea of Bull having a heart attack is perfect because he's a man with an enormous heart who wants to help so many people, but he's a very lonely man who has no one to share his heart with personally. He's, um, he's like uh, somebody who works uh, in uh, like a charity organization or something where they pour themselves into it and they get nourished by helping thousands and thousands of people but they, they don't have any one-on-one -on -one connection. This is Bull all the way through even now as we shoot. We start season three of Bull and he's gone away and he comes back and he's lost some weight and he looks great, and, but it's surface. And as we move through the episode, we see that he hasn't done the work on his heart. His heart is fixed as a mechanism but it's not fixed as a, you know, in the true, you know, figurative meaning of it. You recently said that uh, now that you're the lead, you realize how hard it was for Mark on NCIS. <laughs> what did you notice that, you know, you didn't notice that much when you were on NCIS because you were just, you know. I'll, so I'll tell you a very interesting thing. When you're number two or lower, you actually know more information because people, when you're number one, they don't want you to know about things because there's, whether it's a legal liability or it's, or it's just they don't want to bother you and they, everyone wants to keep you kind of in a bubble. And I know I watched Mark fight very hard to stay out of that bubble and to try and stay integrated and stay in touch and have the information. Um, I don't know if this makes any sense to anyone uh, watching, but it is a very, uh, it's, people want to isolate you to protect you, um, but that isolation can sometimes have the opposite effect. It, it actually creates um, an anxiety because you think, well, I don't know what's going on, and then you get anxious, and then behavior starts to happen where you, you maybe aren't, um, as together as you should be. I'm, you know, I'm working very hard to stay together. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> but, uh, so that's been interesting. And that's the less obvious part. The hours are incredible. The pressure to do, uh, to carry a show, to, to know that if it fails, you are in some large part responsible for that success or failure. In success, I know it has nothing to do with me, but in failure, I would probably take <laughs> all the blame, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, and ultimately, you have a thinner. You have a. It feels like you have less uh, wiggle room as a character, because it 
you have to be maybe this, there's a certain um, hero quality that you have to have, and therefore you can't be as complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I learned from Harmon that, that it, your job is to stay complicated and to keep that and be rigorous with that. Mm -hmm. And luckily we have a great writer, Glenn Gordon Karen from Medium and uh, with Patricia Arquette and Moonlighting, and he, he makes sure that I'm very complicated, much more complicated than I am in real life. Because as you know, Frank, I'm a very simple person. <laughs> okay, turning 50, apart from apnea, what, what are the major changes? Sleep apnea. That, I even sometimes get to work and I have these little marks Mark. from the little <laughs> machine that I have. Uh, I know it's gruesome to think that I'm wearing some sort of contraption when I sleep, but it, I do sleep better. Um, I, I noticed the other day I reached for the remote control and I had a little pop Ooh. in my back. That's just because I'm not stretching. Um, uh, metabolism at this point is just slowed to like cold honey. It's like, you know, when you're pouring honey and it's just cold and it's not coming at all. That's my <laughs> metabolism now. If I so much as think about uh, a donut, it's, you know. Um, <laughs> I think I'm running when I'm really just fast walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's another thing that's happened. I was, you know, moving across the street, and it's like, oh, you're not running. I, I say to people, I'm going to go for a run, and then it's a walk. <laughs> I, but I still call it a run. Can you tell me you are working with Cody on a project? Yes, Can I know you? she's been calling me all morning, so I actually have to. There's a big meeting going on uh, in LA about this project, MIA, it's called. Um, and it is set in Miami. We're finding out uh, very soon, I guess, if it becomes uh, a pilot that we get to shoot. Um, Are you guys producers? We're what? producers, okay. and um, hopefully we will get to pop up in it and be uh, and, and acted in it as well. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's a very uh, fast-paced, um, you know, set in. It, there's a female lead, and it's a very uh, fast-paced uh, cop show, mm -hmm. detective show. Perfect. Thank you, Michael.